let's jump right back into creating some more user flows. So we left off at registering within our product. I think the next user flow we should probably think about is, you know, maybe finding a product, something a little bit more interesting. Well, not necessarily more interesting, but possibly has a little bit of risk. So what I'm going to do is just delete this. We're going to rename this to searching for a product, searching for a product. Okay, so there's multiple ways to find products within our application. We've already kind of understand that. Let's start creating user flows for each type. The one that we're gonna focus on right now, at least, is finding the right product through search. Okay, so let's get right into this. Let's just start fresh. We have our first step. Obviously not this step, but we'll work on that. Okay, so step one, when I'm starting to search at the home screen, so I probably need an input. There's probably a bunch of stuff here. Maybe there's like a headline, some large products. You know, we kind of made this a little bit before. Maybe we should have saved that as a component of its own, but it's okay. Uh, we have some small products, I mean, if we were to try to create a flow for finding a product, we could probably find one through this route, whether it's like a small product or a large product. And, you know, those flows will be different from the one we're creating. So let's focus on just search. Actually, you know what? I like to highlight that, make it look like a CTA. And that's another thing you can do with user flows. You can distinguish based off of color and stuff like that. We can do that with uh, our search over here. Step one, the user is able to begin their search from the home screen. I called it the welcome screen, but it's actually the home screen. Um, the user is able to begin their search from the home screen and that's basically it. So that's step one. Let's just copy that over. Step two, now what should step two be? So like I said before, we can actually start creating, like this actually applies here as well. So we'll know that we'll need to create another flow for selecting a product directly. So sometimes I'll leave like a little note here and just say step 2.1 or something like that. The user is also able to find the right product if it shows up on the home screen. So we can actually create a flow for that if we want to afterwards. Now I know that it's just there as a reminder. So the user is able to begin their search from the home screen. Okay, and what happens next? So the next step, let's just copy that over. Perfect. Step two. Actually, let's just finish this off just a little bit. The user can click the search input. So once they've clicked the input, there is something here that happens and that should probably be them entering their search. So what can we signify as that? We can just say this is like a keyboard. So the user receives a keyboard prompt within a search overlay and is able to enter their search. Perfect, so that's step two. Now they have a prompt, they're able to enter their search. Now, when we were sketching, we started thinking about things like type ahead a bit. So we can actually highlight that here. Okay, let's take that. We can use this as like our type ahead results. So uh, another Figma tip, if I'm going to press Command Shift and duplicate that, I can actually let it go and then press Command D to duplicate the exact same thing I just did. So I can create multiples. 
Now, I'm just gonna change this as the same color. I'm going to signify that these are actually the suggested results. So step three, as the user types, the product gives the user suggestions of potential searches. The user clicks on the search item that relates most to their intended search. So essentially what's happening here is the user is actually clicking on here as they are typing, they're getting suggested results and the user can actually just not click one of these, but they can just keep on going and click enter or whatever that uh, CTA is within the keyboard. But we're just gonna highlight that they can actually click through a suggested result. Okay, so step four, let's jump right into that. So step four, what do they see now? Well, what do you think they see? Let's just remove some of that. So they probably still have their search at the top. I'm just uh, gonna continue to use this and modify it from here on out. I'll use this as well. Can modify this as well. What I can do here is go back to the master component and make this a bit more scalable. Fix the constraints there to make it left and right. So when I do adjust that frame, it's going to adjust with it. So we can play around with that. So let's go back down. Where are we? Here we are. So let's fix that. So those are search results. Boom. Okay, so these are the search results. Um, so this is step four. The user is presented with many search results. And now they choose the product that they have been looking for. So another interesting thing here is, okay, I'm just gonna highlight these really quickly. So let's just highlight those just so, so we can signify that this is being clicked. Like I said, I mean, there's no really right way of doing this. As long as you're explaining this really clearly to um, your audience, they're gonna get it. Uh, just make sure to use what I've told you in terms of like a very clear title, clear direction and clear details and the rest will just kind of follow. But one thing I'm noticing here is that, you know, we spoke a little bit of what the makeup of this page could be. And I'm just gonna create a, like a little button in there. You know, maybe I'm, I'm thinking that, oh wow, like there is a filter here and now we have to think about a filter flow. So as we go through individual flows that we're trying to solve for, we're going to find a bunch more that we're gonna to have to solve for. So this is the great thing about user flows and keeping them separate because it really breaks things apart in a way, even though there are many to actually create and work through, it really helps us kind of make it much more manageable and understandable. So what I've done here is I've just highlighted the search results. So that's just going to indicate that a user is clicking through there. Perfect. Wow. We are on step five. So what happens on step five? So they've clicked the search result and now they've found what they've been looking for. And that is the product. So we're just going to kind of end this here. Let's just steal that again. So honestly, at this point, like don't waste your time going crazy in terms of visual design or anything like that. We really just want to get into like, it's the same concept as sketching. We just want to keep on like generating ideas and we want to work through these and refine the details later. It's really easy to get bogged down by all that kind of stuff. So, okay, we have a CTA at the bottom, you know, like purchase this product or add it to your cart. We have probably like a headline. 
we have some text. Maybe there's like similar products or options here. So there you go, we've kind of created some sort of wireframe. Very easily, it took two seconds just using some of the components that we built. And we can even create a larger component library if we wanted to, but for the sake of moving with speed, being a little lean, this is super easy just to do if you're just quickly jumping into something. If you do this often, and sometimes you will, maybe it's great to create your own kit. So step five, the user is now able to review the product that they had searched for and can decide if they want to add the item to their cart. Perfect. So now I know that after this, there's going to be another flow, 100%, and we're going to tackle that soon. But this is our flow. So finding the right product through search. Step one, the user is able to begin their search from the home screen. There's our search bar. We do know that users can find a product elsewhere. So we'll probably create another flow for that. Step two is this user gets a, an overlay here with the keyboard and the search. They can enter their details. And when they do that, they get suggested results. Here they have the option of actually just clicking the button and going to the search results page just based off of their search or they can use one of their suggested results that we've given them to push them to the search results page so that's what the user does here the user actually clicks this button here and we can define that interaction a little bit more later and now they see a list of search results and over here what they're going to do is they're able to click on a search result and move to the next screen next step in our flow which is the product description page we also do know that we probably need to make a, another flow for what happens if they don't find their product, what happens if they decide to filter. I mean, there are so many different scenarios just loaded in this one screen. And that's what I mean when we have to start asking ourselves some questions in terms of like, well, what is going to happen here? What happens if something doesn't go right? We often always design for the happy scenario and that's totally fine because we do need to design for that scenario. but oftentimes that doesn't happen. So we need to make sure that the unhappy scenario is just as pleasant. So what happens here is they click on the search result and now they're right into our product description page. And from here, they would probably either add the item to the cart, they can actually add it to their wish list. So that's another scenario that we need to think about, a flow that we need to actually build out. And um, yeah, that's it. So this is our flow for finding the right product through search. Great job, everyone.